So hello, my name is Sean Roberts. Um, I am the Chief Technologist for Lincoln Network, and this is Lincoln Shorts. I have with me Tennessee Secretary of State uh, Hargett. What, what safeguards are in place right now to prevent fraud and other... I know we've kind of touched on this, but I'm, I'm going to ask it in a slightly different way um, so we, uh, to, uh, well, to get more information. <laughs> so uh, what sure. safeguards are in, in place to prevent fraud and other problems with voting by mail? Yeah, and, and I, by the way, I appreciate how you asked that question. So first and foremost, I, I don't believe we have a widespread voter fraud in the state of Tennessee. I don't think we have a rampant voter fraud problem. And, and I think that's a large part because of the laws that we have put in place to prevent voter fraud. But I, I'm going to say this. Um, voter fraud tends to not be important to people until it affects they, a race they care about. And all of a sudden, when it's a race they care about that's decided by two votes, you know, five votes, a dozen votes, then all of a sudden it becomes real darn important because it's a race you care about. So um, we... So, you know, and I'm not, so, and, and that's both parties. It doesn't matter if you're Democrat and you lost or Republican, you lost. If you lose a close race, you're convinced something nefarious happened. And, and you said time and time again, and like I said, it doesn't know a particular party. So more to your question, I apologize for that, that sure. brief little event. But um, so in, in Tennessee, of course, we have a photo ID law and, and, you know, it is polled well over 75%, as high as 80%, you know, and, and people, you know, it's a, you know, people are accustomed to showing a photo ID when they come and vote. Now, we did have a court case recently that said that first-time voters in Tennessee, which typically would have had to vote, and I say first-time voters, first-time by mail voters, so people we've never seen present before, um, have have the ability to vote absentee this time if they meet one of the 14 reasons that we spell out in Tennessee law. Now, along that, we still want to make sure they are who they say they are, so we're putting instructions back in when we mail that ballot to them, that they, they would send us a, a photo ID or some type of identification along with that just to, to prove that they are who they say they are. And, and believe that's going to work well, uh, you know, in, in counties throughout the state, they, they're taking it very seriously. First and foremost, they want to make sure the voter gets the opportunity to vote. Uh, that, you know, we, we really want to err on the side of the voter. At, at the same time, we want to protect voter integrity. And so um, that's one of the things we're doing regarding photo ID, um, the law that we have in place regarding first time voters who have never presented before, and, and now how we do that in this era of absentee ballots. Also, when it comes to signatures, uh, you know, we match when you send your absentee ballot request, we match the signature on the form to the one we have on file. And, and frankly, it's not been a, a, a big problem here in Tennessee, you know. And, and if there is a problem, it's usually a couple of different things. You know, somebody else has signed the form for a family member. Um, typically, you wind up calling that voter and it, or mailing them something back out, and then they'll sign it correctly. You know, more often than not, it's probably a husband signing for a wife or a wife signing for a husband. And you find out there was nothing nefarious that happened there. Um, but the signatures do have to match. So you have to match those up. And typically, those things get called on the front end. On the back end, when people are mail have to sign that that envelope when their ballot comes back in, uh, you match signatures again, and um, it, you know that's rarely you know a, a big problem in, in Tennessee uh, because of signature verification and and how seriously we take that. Um, you know, once again, you know the election workers who are bipartisan, Democrats and Republicans both, they're looking at those signatures to look for commonality. They're not looking for reasons to disqualify. Instead, they're looking for reasons to say, yes, that's a valid signature. It matches what we have on file. Does that help? It, it does. And okay. uh, maybe a small follow-up. Um, do you have a set period for the adjudication um, of ballots where uh, the election results have to be certified by? Yeah, they're, they're going to be certified within three weeks of election night. Okay. And, and, so, and, and so if I can... You know, that's something else a lot of people don't realize is that the, the, the results that we're posting on our website and on Twitter and elsewhere on election night, those are unofficial results. Right. They've always, they've always been unofficial results. And, and that's kind of hard for people to understand is that, um, especially if you're in a, a small race somewhere, um, especially a local race that doesn't have a large number of voters, um, results change. You know, there are provisional ballots that have yet to be counted. There are... Um, absentee ballots that might not have all been 
have all been counted. Usually they're all counted because we have a smaller number as we talked about earlier. Right. But, you know, this election, it's going to take a while to ca- count all those absentee by mail ballots. And you're going to have states out there that you referenced postmark states earlier um, that their law allows for ballots to be postmarked by election day. You know, when that happens, um, you're going to have ballots continue to trickle in to those states that are still need to be counted. Right. Which is, yeah, <laughs> that that's that seems like uh, um, unless they have a very strict um, uh, period of uh, certification, uh, meaning strict date, um, that, that sounds like that will be a, um, a, a, an ongoing problem if the uh, ballots trickling in um, from the, the post office. I, I like the, uh, what you explained as far as um, doing a sweep to make sure that you've, that you've uh, gathered up all the remaining ballots so that you know by the end of night that you have all those ballots in hand. And now all you have to do is, you know, uh, um, count them and, and possibly adjudicate the ones that um, don't match as, as, you're, as you were saying. Thank you for joining us. This has been Lincoln Shorts. Thank you.